You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode we're going to be building a powerful electric arc glove. So before we begin, I have two quick things to say. So first off, I've received another letter from one of you guys. And as you can see, the letter comes from Australia, which is pretty cool, I think. And so this letter comes from someone named James Taylor. And as you can see, he put these cool pictures inside of it of a railgun project that he's made. That project looks very awesome. Thank you so much for sending me this letter. And so now I'm going to go ahead and pin this up onto the letter board back here. There we go. And so the second thing I wanted to say, guys, is something really cool happened. One of my favorite YouTubers called The Backyard Scientist uploaded a new video, and in that he gave me a shout out. And so literally, guys, that was super nice of him. And since he gave that shout out, there's about 10,000 more of you guys that subscribed to me. And so although I'm pretty sure most of you have already heard of him and are probably subscribed to him, considering how he has more than 2 million subscribers, if by some reason you haven't subscribed to him, you definitely should, and I'll have his channel linked in the description. So yeah, with that said, let's go ahead and move straight on to the bulk of this video. So pretty much exactly one year ago from today, I made my first project on this channel. And that project was trying to create some high voltage electrical arc gloves. And so although it was successful, I've learned quite a bit more since that point, and I'm going to try and make an upgraded version of those gloves today. And so if you want to see that video I made of these gloves in the previous state, that'll be linked in the description, but keep in mind it was my first video and it sounds like my microphone is a toaster, so it's not that great. But anyways guys, this is a project that I'm gonna have to say don't try at home. This is because I'm going to be arcing electricity across my hand that is both high voltage and high current. And although it's on my one hand, if it shocks me it probably won't go through my heart and kill me, it would still mess up my hand very badly and burn big arcs through it, and that wouldn't be fun at all. So yeah, with that said, let's go ahead and jump straight into building it. To generate the high voltage, I'm going to be using this ZDS driver that I showed how to build in a previous episode. Now, if you want to learn how to build this driver for the Splyback Transformer, that'll be linked in the description below. But I will admit it's changed slightly since that episode. This is mainly because I used this circuit to ignite my combustible play button in my 100,000 subscriber special. And so since I had it so close to it, it kind of got all charred up on the bottom. But I was able to make the necessary repairs to it to get it working again. However, it does look very terrible. And so I'm going to attach one of the outputs of this flyback transformer to this chicken stick, and then I'll show you guys the kind of arc this thing produces. Now currently it's running at around 32 volts, and it stretches from about that far, but then once it gets hot enough, I can stretch the arc out much longer. Now again guys, this is an extremely dangerous arc of electricity here. Also I should mention, at the distance it first arcs at, it draws around 4 amps, but then when I stretch it out, it draws around 8 amps at the point where it breaks. Also, it's worth noting that the high voltage is actually ionizing the air. This produces an extremely hot plasma, as you can see by me putting this paper in between. So anyways, here's the glove that I made about a year ago. As you can see, there's plenty of hot glue in between the terminal and my hand. And so the breakdown voltage between these two terminal points is much lower than the breakdown voltage between the terminals going through my hand than back to the other terminal. And so this way, it'll keep the electricity from shocking through me and instead just jumping over this gap here to produce the arc. And then to turn it on, on the back of my hand, I have this momentary switch. And so by having this band over that switch, whenever I flex my hand, it'll click in the momentary switch. And we'll connect up that switch in series with the ZVS driver. This way it will only produce the arc when I'm flexing my hand. And so let's go ahead and wire the components from this glove onto that and see if it works well. And so first I'm going to connect the negative of the power supply to one end of the switch. And then the other end of the momentary switch I'm just going to connect up to the negative side of the ZVS driver. And so now I'm going to solder one of the terminals of the glove to the output of the flyback transformer. And so first I'm going to slide some of this heat shrink tubing over this so that way we can easily seal it up afterwards. And so next I'm just going to twist these wires together and then I'm going to just carefully solder them together with my soldering iron. Now with those soldered together I'm just going to snip away some of the excess wire and then we can slide the heat shrink tubing back over it. Once we have that heat shrink tubing on it's as simple as applying a small bit of heat to make sure it shrinks up around the wire. And now that connection should be sufficiently isolated from the outside. And then I'm going to use the exact same process to attach the other terminal to the other side of the high voltage output. Now that we have those connections made, we should be able to test it out sufficiently. And so I'm just going to slide this glove onto my hand. And then I'm just going to strap it on using this. Okay, I have it connected up to my hand. Um, I'm going to go ahead and test it out in three, two, one. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, it's producing that powerful arc directed up and away from my hand. Just for fun, let's try blowing on it. Ah. Now, I was kind of expecting that to shock me, but I knew it would only be a little bit, because basically I blew the hot ionized air over here, so it was much more likely to conduct over here, which then is just a thin layer over here that then it would just easily arc to. So in order to prevent that, I would probably just need to put more hot glue up here to prevent the blow radius from what the ionized air would go through from actually being able to make it through the glove into me again. And so that's one bit of protection that you could add on to something like this. 
But that was only just one small streamer, so I got lucky. Um, yeah, just don't really blow on it. Now, as you can see, this glove still does produce arcs hot enough to light up any piece of paper and really anything you put in front of it. Since I'm going to try and fit all the circuitry inside of this old lemonade container, I rewound the new flyback transformer. As you can see, I made this one a lot nicer than I had the old one wound. Also, with that said, it's quite a bit smaller, so it should be able to fit into the casing. And so I'm going to connect this transformer up to the glove, and then I'll be back with you guys in just a moment. Okay, and now I have it all put into this case here. By putting it into this case, it definitely cleaned up the project by quite a bit. And also, I found with my new flyback transformer inside of here, even at a lower voltage, it'll still arc across this. So I think that had to do with that I wound this one more neatly, so it was probably a little bit more efficient. I do plan on making this project more portable, and by that I mean, of course, not having a power supply to power it. However, for that I need batteries that can deliver a high amount of current, and so I'm going to order two drone batteries I found that output 14 volts and can supply up to 20 amps each. And the nice part is that they're going to be pretty small, so I can just attach them onto the side of this, and it should be perfectly fine to carry around with me. But again, since I don't have those currently, let's go ahead and show you what it looks like with the glove now within the capsule. And so as you can see, whenever I flex, we get that arc. Okay, so now just for fun, let's go ahead and try shocking an apple with this. Whoa. Well, that does not look like it would be fun to get shocked with, personally. As you can see, it's kind of blasted out lots of little divots into the apple. To be honest, the apple kind of tastes like ozone now. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to show it igniting just a little bit of gunpowder here. Now, I could probably just arc it off of the glove, however, the gunpowder leaves a weird residue all over everything, so I'm going to be using these terminals attached to the glove to light it off. Okay, I have it all attached up now, so when I flex my hand, it should ignite all of this. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, now I'll show you guys the arc when it's dark outside, so I'll put those clips going over this right now. Now you may be wondering, why would I ever build something like this? And well, to quote the words of Cave Johnson, science isn't about why, it's about why not. And so although I can't think of any practical applications for this, it still is definitely pretty cool, I think. But once again, guys, do not try this at home, because this is kind of stupid to do. Because as we saw with that apple, if this were to shock through me, it would hurt very bad, probably. But nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I'd really appreciate it if you were to hit the like button. And if you'd like to see my videos such as this one, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button so they'll show up in your subscription newsfeed. If you have a video idea for something you'd like to see in the future, go ahead and leave that in the comment section below. And so guys, please remember to be safe, and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science. And in today's episode, we're going to show you how to make a chasing LED circuit and how it works.